It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode of the Mike Prince Show here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We can be found on Spotify now, but you can also follow us on our social media handles for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. YouTube channel is Open Mic Broadcast Network. The website, obnradio.com, and our 24-hour dial-in message line, 713-570-6736. And without any further delay, we'll jump right into today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Attorney Lee Van Richardson, located at 1047 Austin Street in Hempstead, Texas. For all of your legal needs, you can give them a call today to get you back on the right track. That number is 979-826-8080. Zero eight. Well, today's show, at least from my vantage point, is going to have a roller coaster up and down belief and disbelief. Just stick around and you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. First things first, though, the much anticipated Southern University, North Carolina A&T baseball game scheduled to be in Chicago on May 24th has been canceled. Now, there are a lot of variations on why that is and some are believable some not so believable but the bottom line is there will be no game and as a result southern university more so than north carolina a and t will stand idle at least for now this game had more impact than what people may or may not have really initially understood yes you get a chance to solidify who would be the better team in the world of HBCU baseball. But it was also a game of importance for Southern University to get ready for regional play, which will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Which led me to kind of think a little bit out the box on what could be done to help the SWAC baseball champion not to be so stagnant in between the SWAC championship game and start of regional play. And a couple of scenarios that I've come up with, you know, scrimmaging or inner squad games, they're okay, but it's not as much of an edge. You could do one of two things. You are allowed, according to NCAA rules, to play 56 games. For the most part, schools schedule anywhere between 48 and 52 games. Some of them take advantage of that, playing some games during the fall. But a creative way of doing that, if you're a SWAC school who has the forecast of being a contender for SWAC championship. You could schedule a little small round robin series, if you would, that you could host with some local D2, even D3, and possibly some JUCO programs within your immediate vicinity and have like a two, three game round robin, or should I say a two or three day round robin series that way you can keep your guys sharp as they get ready for the regional start working out your rotations and just get everybody loose and relaxed for playing ball it would cost you a little bit the reason i say d two three or possible juco within your i'm going to say 50 to 100 mile radius wouldn't cost much to host them That could be what we call a turnaround trip. They come that same day and leave and come back. It's just something that can get in. You can schedule three different programs to come down for a doubleheader. You might play a doubleheader on Monday, take Tuesday off, invite another one to come in on that Wednesday, take Thursday off, then come in on that Friday. Or however, you could schematically put it together. That's an alternative. And to be quite honest with you, the more I think about this, I would be more encouraged to lean toward some local junior colleges. That way it could almost be a showcase for those would be graduating sophomores as a possibility of looking at becoming a part of your program as well as get the play in. So there are a lot of creative ways that this could possibly be worked out. And it also does not cut out the possibilities of getting this MEAC swag thing off the ground with a little bit more detailed planning. But it's just something that I thought that would at least warrant a look for the sake of keeping the guys sharp, making a strong representation for the conference, whomever 
that representative may be. Another possible and creative solution could be to schedule an exhibition game with a local minor league team. In fact, it might even create an unexpected payday for you and your program. So we'll see how things unfold. We'll try to catch up with the powers that be and some of the decision making that was being made in regards of that. And speaking of decision makers, we're going to be hearing real soon from the American Softball Association representatives. We've made a reach out to them. They've responded and we're going to be lining up an interview. We get a little bit more detail about the professional softball league that both Larissa Yaya Hernandez and Miss Destiny Williams have declared their eligibility for the draft coming up real soon with that season starting June 14th of this year. On to some other interesting news and notes. The state of California has began the ball to bouncing, if you would, with the Fair to Play Act, which is Senate Bill 206. Now, this Senate Bill 206 would allow student athletes enrolled in California to earn income by way of endorsements or sponsorships. We'll get back to that in just a moment. What's important to note about this particular Senate Bill 206 is that it had bipartisan support. It was voted upon 31 for, for against, and it has moved on to the next phase of becoming actual law. It is waiting now for the approval from the state assembly as they'll look over and all the possible considerations of taking this to the next level. Now, back to what this could mean. All student athletes, regardless of what level you want, could earn an income from endorsements or sponsorships for their image or likeness. Can anyone say EA Sports? We talked about this just the other day. This would be a great opportunity for not only the student athletes to earn an income, but also the departments to earn an income. Because let's be honest, if we have a student athlete who goes out and gets a quote unquote sponsorship, they're going to call that tampering, this, that and the other. They get the endorsements. There is a gray area of your paying this athlete. Here's a reality check. The big programs are already doing this creatively and they have dubbed it as a stipend. Let's just put that out there for what it is. Number two, it's the right thing to do. We know for the most part, students and even more cases, student athletes are broke. They're absolutely broke. But if I'm a student and I can create a side hustle, whether it's a, being a DJ, creating graphics or whatever that side hustle is, is perfectly fine. But if we're student athletes, it becomes a gray area, the danger zone. I think this right here is a very great opportunity for student athletes and for institutions who might be challenged financially. And I'm not talking about your power fives. They're going to make their money with their TV deals and everything else. But I'm talking about those quote unquote mid majors, those HBCUs, those D2s, even D3 programs could benefit from this. So I'm excited to see how this one will unfold. We'll keep you posted as it develops. Now for my shame on you segment of today's show. I I really can't believe what I am about to share with you, but nonetheless, here we go. The Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, also known as the MIAC, it's a Division III conference. They have agreed to kick out University of St. Thomas Tommies. Now, currently it is a 13 school conference and the University of St. Thomas Tommies were a part of this conference inception back in 1920. They unanimously, being the other athletic directors, presidents of the MIAC, the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, They have agreed to kick University of St. Thomas out because they are too dominant, in particularly in football. What have we come to? What the hell is going on between the sheets and my home? Unbelievable. 
unbelievable. I understand this is a D3 program, D3 conference. I do understand that D3 conferences do not offer scholarships. But how can you literally gather up all of your toys and go home because you can't figure out how to even the playing field? God, that's amazing. You are so talented. Huh? Wait a second. Something's not right here. You were just making it look like you were playing. You're a phony. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. That's right. You're a big fat phony. You're a phony. On that note, for the entire MIAC, kick rocks. I really cannot believe it. I would love to hear from you about this or any other topic we've gone over today. The number is 713-570-6736. Drop us a line, share your thoughts and comments. Once again, we want to thank Attorney Lee Van Richardson for sponsoring today's program. It can be reached by way of phone, 979-826-8008. Don't forget, Prairie View A&M University National Alumni Association Golf Tournament, June 26, 2019. Call and register today at 936-857-5817. My time has come where I must exit stage left. I want to thank you guys so much for being a part of today's show. Until the next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side.